In this video, we're going to be solving a very exponential equation. So we kind of have like two towers, 2 to the power, 2 to the power, 2 to the power x equals 4 to the power, 4 to the power, 4 to the power x. And I, I think we've done uh, similar problems before. If I find them, I'm going to link these down below. But at some point, I remember doing something like 4 to the 4 to the x and 2 to the 2 to the x. So uh, a tower with a lower height. Anyways. To be able to solve this problem, we're going to use powers of 2. And I think the results will be very surprising. At this point, try to guess the solution and how many solutions there are. And then we'll compare our answers. Okay? So, to be able to solve this problem, first of all, I'm going to focus on the basis. I have a 2 and I have a 4. And good thing that 4 is 2 squared. If it wasn't, then we could probably use logs to write it. But at this point, I can go ahead and write the 4 as 2 to the second power and then raise it to 4 to the power, 4 to the power x. You see that? Now, the rule tells us that, okay, we're supposed to multiply the exponents. The whole exponent here, and don't get me wrong, is 4 to the power, 4 to the power x. So when you write something like a to the power, b to the power c, it basically means a to the power, b to the power c. Make sense? Not a to the power b to the power c because this is a to the power bc and bc and b to the c are usually different things make sense so these two are different so we are talking about the first one so now what can you do next and wait a minute wolfram alpha should have a solution for us right uh oh standard computation time exceeded too bad it can't do it in normal time i guess this is too complicated for a machine anyways but we can solve it all right, let's pick it up from here. Now, at this point, we can multiply the exponents and get 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the power 4 to the power x. Make sense? And now this is nice because I can totally ignore the bases because they are the same and kind of focus on the exponents being equal to each other. But couldn't we also say that, well, the exponents could both be zero at the same time and then the bases don't matter but exponents cannot be zero in this case right anyways that's a different story you could also divide both sides by this and then subtract the exponent and look at the exponent set it equal to zero it will be the exact same thing make sense or you could use something else which we'll talk about later anyways now let's go ahead and pick it up from there and solve we have 2 to the power, 2 to the power, what was it? 2 to the power, 2 to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 times 4 to the power x, 2 times 4 to the power, 4 to the power x. Okay, 2 times 4 to the power, 4 to the power x. So this is what we have so far. And again, the bases are equal, so we can just compare the exponents. Let's do it. 2 to the power 2 to the power x equals 2 times 4 to the power 4 to the power x. But that can be written as 2 squared to the power 4 to the power x. And now we can go ahead and multiply the exponents one more time and get the following. And at this point, this is like 2 to the power 1. So we can add the exponents. You see a lot of manipulations. That's what's nice about this problem that you get to use practice laws of exponents. And now from here, we can go ahead and write this as 2 to the power 1 plus 2 times 4 to the power x. Awesome. Again, again, the bases are the same, right? So now we can focus on the exponent. And let's write this first. 1 plus 2 times 4 to the x equals 2 to the x. So set that equal to this. And now notice that we don't really need to bring anything else down because we no longer have the two exponentials with the same base. We have a 1 plus something which is going to mess up things. Great deal. But there's a way to solve it by substitution because substitution is awesome. Okay? Let's call this something. How about t? t is fun. So now this is going to be t squared, right? 1 plus 2t squared, 2t or not 2t, equals t. Let's put everything on the same side and hope to get a nice solution right 2t squared minus 2t i mean minus t plus 1 equals 0 and when you look at this problem 
from the quadratic formula perspective, you can realize negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 minus 4ac. Uh-oh, we got complex solutions. Divide by 4. All right, no worries. We're going to solve this problem in the complex world. 1 minus 8 is 7 to the square root of negative, sorry, 1 minus 8 is negative 7. The square root of negative 7 is square root of 7i. And then those are going to be the solutions. There are two solutions, but I'm just going to use one of them. And you can hopefully do the other one, all right? I'm not going to work through the whole thing. But uh, it's fairly simple. And if it doesn't make sense to you, please let us know in the comment section. Now, let's take the positive value. By the way, I'm not saying negative value is not going to work. It is going to work because we're kind of dealing with complex numbers. Everything works there, right? So, what is t? t is 2 to the power x, as far as I remember. Okay, so this is equal to 2 to the power x. How do you solve this equation? 2 to the x equals a complex number? Seriously? Well, that means x is a very complex number, right? <laughs> well, there is no such term, but you get the idea. It's in the exponent, so we're going to have to use Euler's formula, a little bit of complex exponentiation, the natural log or the complex logarithm, so on and so forth. All right, ready for that? All right, let's dive in. So first of all, I want to use Euler's formula or Euler's number as my base. So 2 to the x can be written as e to the power ln 2 to the x, which is e to the power x ln 2. That's what's nice about it, that we can always change the base. Remember how we have the change of base formula for logarithms? We also have it for exponentials, okay? Now, this is equal to t, which is 1 plus root 7i all over 4. Great. So here's what I need to do. I do have an equation of two complex numbers. One of them is exponential, the other one isn't. So we kind of need to polarize this. Is, is that acceptable to use? Turn it into polar form. I don't know if people say polarize, but that's what I mean. Let's use the polar form. How do you write something in polar form? Well, any complex number z can be written as r e to the i theta. Theta is the argument of z, which is the angle that it makes with the positive real axis. And r is the distance from 0, which is also called the absolute value or the modulus. If you want to know more about complex numbers or if you are new to complex numbers and refresh, whatever, you can go ahead and check out my other channel, A plus BI, which is all about complex numbers. All right. OK, after the commercial break, let's go ahead and continue with the problem. How do I find the r and how do I find theta for this number? Well, let's go ahead and write in standard form first, like this. This is the form we call standard form or a plus bi, right? So this is called the standard form because we wrote it as a plus bi. Notice that this is our a and this is our b, right? So it's a plus bi. And then once you write something in a plus bi, you can go ahead and find the absolute value by taking the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that's going to give you r, right? And the theta can be found by using the tangent, because tangent theta is equal to b over a. From here, theta can be written as tan inverse or arc tangent. Some people write it as arc tangent, especially in Europe and Russia, I believe. Then this becomes the theta. Now, but... We also have to be careful about tan inverse because b over a can be in different quadrants, can have the positive value in the first and the third. But in this case, we do know we're in the first quadrant, so tan inverse b over a directly is going to give us the answer. Otherwise, you just, have, you just add pi to it, and then that'll give you the argument. Make sense? So you just got to be careful about the quadrant. So what do we do with this? We can go ahead and write our number as r, which is the square root of 1 over 16 plus 7 over 16. By the way, that's 8 over 16, which is 1 half. So this is the square root of 1 half, or root 2 over 2. And then 1 over 4 plus square root of 7 over 4 can be written as r times cosine, actually, I'm not going to use the cosine, let me use the Euler's formula, times e to the power i times theta, and theta is 10 inverse b over a, which is 10 inverse root 7 over 4. 
whatever that number is. And of course, if you punch this into a calculator, it will give you a numerical value. Make sense? Okay, so you kind of think about it as a right triangle whose uh, one of its angles is theta. This is the opposite side. This is the j adjacent side. And then you need the angle that makes this triangle. Okay, so we got this. And now let's go ahead and set that equal to e to the power x ln 2 because that's what we had on the left hand side. And now on the right hand side, we have this Eulerian form or polar form. Okay? Awesome. Now here's what we need to do. We want to get rid of the bases, the E's. We want to bring the X down. And how do you do that? By using natural log. So natural log on the left hand side is just going to be a real logarithm. But on the left, on the, I mean on the, okay, what am I talking about? It's going to be the natural log of root 2 over 2 but when you go into the complex world, you're basically talking about the, uh, the complex logarithm. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and write bo uh, both of those as ln. And then it's going to be the following. This is going to become x ln 2. And here we have the log of the product. So I can write it as the sum of two logs. And log or ln e to the power something is going to be that. So i times 10 inverse square root of 7 over 4 is going to be our imaginary part. Almost, right? But we need to solve for x. So how do you solve for x? You can go ahead and divide everything by ln 2. And then this is going to become 10 inverse root 7 over 4 divided by ln 2 times i. And obviously ln root 2 over 2 is kind of like the square root of 1 over 2. So think about it this way ln uh, square root of 1 half is actually going to be the 1 half to the power 1 half, which is 2 to the power negative 1 half. When you ln this, it's going to become negative 1 half times ln 2. When you divide by ln 2, they're going to cancel out. So this is going to leave us with negative 1 half, negative 1 half. Let me rewrite it. Didn't look good to me. x equals negative 1 half plus 10 inverse root 7 over 4 divided by ln 2 multiplied by i. All right? So the real part of the answer is just going to be negative 1 half. Think about what would happen if you didn't have an imaginary part. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.